Welcome to worship here online at University United Methodist Church in the heart of Austin, Texas. Whether you worship with us every week or whether this is your very first time joining us online, I want you to hear these words. Whoever you are and wherever you happen to be on your faith journey or your life journey, you are welcome. I'm so glad that you've decided to be with us this day. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. My name is Teresa Wellborn, and I'm the senior pastor here at University UMC. Again, I'm so glad that you have decided to be in worship with us this day. I want to let you know that today in our worship service, our associate pastor, Reverend Earl Kim, will be preaching. His sermon text comes from the Gospel of John, and we will hear those familiar words where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. His sermon title has a clever name, Ode to Bread. Today is also the day that Christians around the world celebrate something called World Communion Sunday. I want to remind you that if you wish to receive communion, know that we always celebrate Holy Communion here at University UMC in our sanctuary at the 11 a.m. service on the first Sunday of every month. As well, members of our pastoral team would be so honored to deliver communion to you if for any reason you're not able to get out due to health reasons or other concerns. Again, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you would like communion at your home. As we continue in worship, may we pray. On this World Communion Sunday, O oh God, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences and give us a heart so big to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for all. Amen. And now let us join together with Alicia as they lead us in song. Let's 
scripture reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 25 through 35. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I recently learned that the poet Pablo Neruda loved a particular poetic form, that is the Ode. He wrote a total of 225 odes, and most of them are dedicated to very common things such as flowers, animals, and plants. Among his odes, the most interesting one to me is Ode to French Fries, which makes me hungry. And the most meaningful one is Ode to Bread, in Spanish, Oda al Pan. Ever since I read it, it has remained in my heart. This Ode begins with these lines. Bread, you rise from flour, water, and fire. Dance or light, flattened or round. You duplicate the mother's rounded womb. How simple you are, bread, and how profound. How simple and how profound. In the Ode, Neruda finds bread profound because bread is for life, not for the life of the privileged, but for the life of all people. And to keep this bread the way it is meant to be, Neruda pledges himself to fight against the injustice that takes bread out of people's hands. Towards the end of the ode, he envisions the future victory of the people in that fight. Singing, Crowned with sheaves of wheat, we will win earth and bread for everyone. Then life itself will have the shape of bread deep and simple, immeasurable and pure. And the bread we eat each morning, everyone's daily bread, will be hallowed and sacred because it will have been won by the longest and costliest of human struggles. Truly, how profound the bread is. In the struggle for justice and in the dream of a new world, Bread is not just simple food. It is a profound metaphor for the life of the people. For me, there is a simple Asian bread that has a profound meaning. That is a steamed bun stuffed with a filling. It is actually related to one of my dreams, the dream Koreans call Tamo. 
Taemong literally means conception dream that gives a sign of forthcoming or ongoing conception. I know it sounds crazy, but this dream is very common for Koreans. So in Korea, when someone has a baby, a very typical question people ask is, what was the Taemong, the conception dream? In the past, this dream was a big deal because people somehow believed that the dream foretells the baby's future. No wonder they wanted to dream of something auspicious and glorious, like a dragon, a tiger, a giant fish, jade and gold, the sun and moon, and so on. But I already told you what I dreamed of. Yes, a steamed bun. Can you imagine? I dreamed of a steamed bun for my newborn daughter, Sage. I wish it could at least look more auspicious and glorious somehow, but no matter how many times I rewind and play the same dream, it was just a soft and fluffy steamed bun. It was a somewhat disappointing dream. But soon I came to cherish the dream after I discovered its profound meaning. I learned that in East Asian culture, the stuffed steamed bun has been the sign of new life for centuries. The Chinese word for this steamed bun is bao. And this word originally indicates a package. Look at this Chinese letter, bao, here. Doesn't it look like a package? It's an ideogram that came from an ancient graphic symbol visualizing a baby in a womb. So, in conception dreams, bao means a package filled with blessings and good tidings of new life. How profound a steamed bun is. From the day I dreamed of it, it can't be just simple bread anymore. The steamed bun is already a nickname for my daughter, and for me, it, it will always stand for new life. Bread, this sustaining food for life, not only meets the most basic human need, but also symbolizes human life itself. Bread for life. It is as profound as it is simple. And whether it is bread for all life in people's history, or bread for new life in my own personal story, bread find one more layer of profoundness as we celebrate World Communion Sunday today. Today, wherever people gather in the name of Jesus and break bread together, like us gathering here online, our bread for life meets the bread of life. I am the bread of life, Jesus says in the Gospel of John. And today we celebrate the dwelling of this bread of life in our bread for life. Today at our communion table, this bread that comes down from heaven is embodied in our bread that comes out of the earth. This bread that gives life to the world is present in our bread that sustains life in the world. And in this mystical communion between the sacred and the mundane, our communion bread becomes the profound package of grace. Although our bread is what Jesus calls the food that perishes, in contrast to the food that endures for eternal life, here at our communion table, we will find no dualism between the temporal and eternal, the material and the spiritual. It is because Jesus himself, as the Word made flesh, overcomes such binaries. 
It is because Jesus, by giving himself for us, opens up the way to reconcile God and the world. Thanks to Jesus, at our communion table, we see the heavenly in the earthly. We see the profound love in the simple food. We see the power to change the world in the sharing of a humble meal. This is the good news. God's grace is never far from us. Rather, it is wrapped in the form of our daily bread. And this is the holy mystery. The divine is incarnated in Jesus' body. And by sharing this bread, we, the human, are incorporated into the body of Christ, the church. The good news of the embodied grace and the mysterious bodily connection between God and us hinges on Jesus, the bread of life. On this World Communion Sunday, Christians everywhere celebrate him bringing us to his table and making us one across all our differences. As we continue to celebrate, I hope and pray we may also think about the way to extend our table, share Jesus with others, and invite more people to find nourishment here. And I find one of the ways to do so not far from us. Every Saturday morning, Open Door Ministry of our church makes simple bread to serve the unhoused. This bread is the famous Mexican bread, quesadilla. Early in the morning, leaders and volunteers meet in the church kitchen, make a simple filling with beans, tomatoes, onions, and ground turkey and put it in the tortillas with some cheese to make quesadillas. Most of the time it is Charles who cooks them on a large griddle, so we call this quesadilla chacadilla. Yesterday we brought out the tables to the courtyard of the church as usual and shared over 250 quesadillas with our guests. As I serve them, do I consecrate quesadillas as the communion bread? No. But do I feel the presence of Jesus as I make and share those quesadillas? Do I think that this simple bread for life can be a package of the bread of life? Every single time. And I would like to invite you to feel it too. I mean, please volunteer. Today I dream of the world communing around the table of Jesus. Whether that is a solid wood table in our sanctuary, an ordinary dining table at home, a plastic table in the courtyard, or a cardboard table on the street. I pray there be bread. Whether that is baked bread, steamed buns, or cooked quesadillas, I pray there be the bread of life also. And I pray what Jesus says, says may come true to all. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. How simple you are, bread, and how profound. A literary critic beautifully characterizes the way Pablo Neruda writes the ode, saying, Neruda democratized the ode by using it to celebrate the Monday. If our God is a poet, I think God may write an ode, an ode to celebrate the world. And I sometimes imagine Jesus may be the divine ode to our human lives, the holy ode to our humble bread for life. In this ode of love, 
God's earthbound tribute to our lives meets our heavenward adoration of grace. As we sing this beautiful ode with our voices at the table of Jesus, as we remember and celebrate the bread of life with all the people around the world, may our hearts be reverberated with the sound that calls us to God's mission in this world, and may our lives be the instruments of God that always play the tune of love in the rhythm of faith. May it be so. Amen. from God this day and every day is to go forth into this world and to live our lives in full assurance that we are beloved by God and to know that the call is upon our heart to share the love and light of Christ with others. This day I am grateful that you are present with us in worship here at University UMC, a place of unconditional love and justice in action here in the heart of Austin, Texas. The generous gifts of so many members and friends enables us to continue to be this type of welcoming place in Austin. This day, if it is upon your heart to give financially to the work of Christ here at University UMC, you can go to the website and click the donate button or simply write a check and mail it to the church office. Friends, I want to also say thank you to all of you who contributed to our special offering throughout the last couple of months. This special offering went to Habitat for Humanity, and I'm excited to share that we have reached our goal of $5,000. As well, if you are interested in volunteering in that work, contact Pastor Earl. There are two different Saturday work days where we will be partnering with other downtown churches on a Habitat for Humanity house. 
I also remind you that there are other ways to connect with us as a community through programs and other ways of volunteering, and you can find out more information on our website. Friends, again, thank you for being in worship with us this day. And now, as you go forth, receive this benediction from Pastor Earl. Hear these words of benediction. It is Blessing for World Communion Sunday, written by Pastor Teresa. I need today's reminder of a table large enough to welcome the entire world. As I take you in, call me to look beyond myself. May the mystery of bread and wine and bodies increase my reverence for everyday life. Amen.